Hello and welcome back to 100 Pound Photography. This is the Nikon D2H. Thank you for those who've commented in the teaser videos that have been previous to this to guess its sensor size. I can now put you out of your misery. It is only a 4.1 megapixel sensor. This camera was released back in 2003. Uh, the sensor is a JFET sensor, which is not one I've ever come across before. I've since learned that this is was solely developed by Nikon. Um, it is stands for Junction Field Effect Transistor. Now I have absolutely no idea what that means. I'm not electronically minded. Um, all I do know is it from the blurb I've come across. It is similar to CMOS, but it has higher speed data transfer. Uh, you will see later on some images I've taken, but and you can see that this sensor is absolutely dreamy with cam capturing sharp images. When this was new, this would have set you back a whopping £2,800 or about $3,000 just for the body. It is an absolute beast of a camera. It is 16 by 16 centimetres, 9 centimetres deep almost. And it weighs a whopping 1,200 grams. To put that into some sort of context, if I just push that back there for a moment. and put the Pentax K10D in front of it, you can see exactly how much bigger that camera is. It's an absolute beast. It was obviously designed for professional photographers back in the day. And to be honest, I think you could still do a, do a pretty good job today, even though it's only got the four megapixel sensor. It can shoot up to 8 frames per second, so if you're into your sports and wildlife photography, this would be a very serious contender for you to think about. Um, okay, it's not got all the bells and whistles that most modern cameras have. However, it does have a few that are worth mentioning. It is weatherproofed, or, so that is another great consideration if you are someone that takes it out and about into the wild or on the sports pitches can't remember if I just mentioned it or not but it takes eight frames per second so that was quite was very fast back in its back of the day and it still holds good today um, it only has 11 autofocus area points and they are all towards the middle of the sensor so that is a bit disappointing but considering when this was released you can't grumble at it uh, it takes CC, CF cards as rather than the SD cards to get to them is a bit of a interesting one so you flip that flip up there you press a little button there and then you see the CF card goes in there uh, it's only got a very small screen on the back as you can see um, it, it's good enough to be able to, to see your images but it's not that great for getting any sort of uh, I don't know how well you can see that there for any great picture detail into it so you will have to have a proper look on the computer um, it, it's good enough to see what you've taken though so that's that's good so you've got your dual um, LCD screen, so you've got your it displays things like your ISO settings down there, and most of your rest of your information up here. Uh, what's there else ready to say? It's uh, got all your, your your speed set speed settings. What am I talking about? Uh, your shooting th settings up here, so you can do it as continuous low speed, continuous high speed your timer and all the rest of that is, is hidden is on the, that little dial there all the buttons are perfectly laid out for me I'm very happy with that uh, it's quite an easy system to actually navigate around considering that this is a professional level camera um, everything is sort of scroll down menus and are quite easy to find um, one drawback I've found with this is that the, the screen does tend to give a blue tint to everything you look at I'm not sure if that's just me being in a bit of a Cuts and not being able to set it properly, or whether that was a, just the issue with the screen at the time. Um, but I haven't had a huge amount of time, so I've not had a great play with it. But that's a minor thing, anyway. Um, another little thing I've 
with this camera which I absolutely love is you've got a little shutter for your viewfinder there so if you're doing things like long exposures that will actually blank that out so it avoids any unnecessary um, light bleeding in it eliminates it as much as possible which I think is a great little feature uh, speaking of little features another thing is on the grip down the bottom here is you have a separate shutter button, power button and you've got your twiddly dials there to be able to change things like your, your shutter speed and your aperture which is great so you can hold it that way without having to faff around with that uh, same as it was in that way we're going to quickly cut away to some pictures that I've taken with this um, let me know what you think in the comments below um, so yeah, so here's the pictures and we'll give a little recap with it afterwards. So there you go, that's the pictures from the, from the camera, um, I hope you like what it's, it's demonstrated um, and I hope you can see what I see with, with the beauty of that 4 megapixel sensor, it, it's, it's really really good considering how old this camera is. This one can go a bit over £100 pounds, um, depending on, on the market and how, what it's like at the, at the time. Um, I managed to get it for just over a hundred pounds or equivalent I did have to try I traded another camera for it I'm in two minds on whether to keep this camera or not the only reason I wouldn't keep it is because there's another D2 something or other out on the market I can't remember off the top of my head what that is it might be I think it's the D2X um, that would be the only reason I'd get rid of it is I'll trade it in for that um, but I'm absolutely in love with this camera uh, let me know in the comments below whether you think I should keep it or whether I should uh, should do a review of the other D2 camera okay I'm gonna wrap this up now thank you very much for watching it has been a pleasure to, to do this for you please like and subscribe and share to anyone that you think might be interested in what I have to say um, I do have some other cameras that I will be doing reviews of fairly soon hopefully uh, there's still the Olympus DSLR, I haven't got around to doing it, but uh, I've been itching to do that one. Uh, I do also have a, uh, a point and click camera to uh, to do for you, so uh, it be interesting to see which one that turns out to be. Just to keep you guessing. Alright, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks very much, I'll see you again soon.